Today's home is absolutely chock full of technology. Our computers have become such an integral part of our lives that it's pretty much impossible to separate most of us from our technology. Now, home servers are designed to support and tie all of these home systems together. This is the HP Media Smart Home Server. We've looked at it a few times in the past, and we will be looking at it from time to time in the future as well. There's a lot a home server will do for us, and it's going to take some time for us to completely get our heads around all the value there is in a home server. But in a nutshell, a home server lives on our home network, and it does all the things at home that business networks do in the office. Backs up all of our computers and allows us to store and share all of our media files like music and movies and photos, as well as other types of documents. Now, what I want to show you today is how easy it is to expand. Now, there's two ways I want to talk about expanding a server. First is adding new users, and the second is to add more storage to the server. So, I'm showing you how to add new users because it's really important to understand how good the software is and how easy it is for us to administer a server because it's not like you need an IT department anymore to manage a server. This is the big advance that makes home servers practical in the home. It's a very easy process managing your server and your network. So I'm going to show you how to add a new user just by clicking on user accounts. I'm in the server's console here, which is the area that we manage all of the different attributes of the server. And when I go into the user accounts, you can see I'm just setting the server up for the first time. So there's only one person currently registered. That's me. If I want to add a new user, which you're going to want to do, you're going to want to add each member of the family and anybody who needs to access the server. I'm just going to put in their name and it's going to be Greg. We're going to put in Greg. And then you've got to give each person a logon name, which they're going to use for signing onto the server. And, you know, following some sort of convention like first name, last uh, initial, that sort of thing is kind of commonplace. Then you've got to give them a password. Give them a good password that they can remember. They can get in, and then, of course, they can go and change it to a more secure password a little bit later themselves. And you have to confirm it. And then we see all the different management tools that we have as far as setting access to different shared folders because all of the folders on this drive are basically going to be shared. So I can give him full access to the music, photos, public, software. And then you can see there's a, a, a private folder for me. This is where all of my backups are going to occur. So when I back up any of my computers, they're going to be backed up onto this folder. And we don't give anybody else access to that, so Greg's not going to get access to my private files, but he's going to get access to all of our shared files. As you can see, it's a very easy process administering the network. And that's one of the keys to the home server product is it has to be easy for the average person to manage their network. And indeed, it is. The next thing we want to do is we want to add some more storage. Now, the home server is currently available in two different versions. There's a 500 gigabyte and a one terabyte version. Now, I've got the 500 gigabyte version here, but all of them have expansion capabilities. There's actually three empty drive bays in here that each have these cages that accept industry standard SATA drives. And the beauty of industry standard SATA drives is they're very easy to install. Actually, no tools are even needed to mount them in the cage. I mounted one in here earlier today. This is another 500 gigabyte drive. And let me show you how easy it is to install. The first thing I'm going to do is, you don't actually have to do this. You can just plug it straight in. I'm going to go into the software and click on server storage. And this tells me what drives are installed and if those drives are healthy and how much data has been written to the drives. Since this is a new server, I only have the one 500 gigabyte drive installed. And as you can see over here, it is pretty much empty. Now, installing a drive couldn't be simpler. Once you've mounted it in the cage, all you do is you slide it into an available slot and then you push it right in. We don't have to restart the server, shut it down or anything. We just have to mount it in there and then we'll see that the software will automatically start to recognize that there is a new drive. We'll see the LED light here accessing the drive and in just a few seconds the media server software will recognize that what's going on and there it is on my screen saying there's a new drive that's been installed and giving me the option to select that drive and just by clicking on this little button here add the storage. It's that easy to add incremental storage. So I've got three available bays here, so I can quite easily build up to two or three or four terabytes of storage, and then you can get more of these cages if you want, and you can store them just beside the server if you need, and they're actually hot swappable. So if you want to back up some files that you don't need as often, you can actually have them sitting there and then plug them in when you want them. Home servers are a product that's taking time for the average consumer to grasp, and that's okay. It represents a real change in the way we look at our computing universe. Our PC has historically been a lone wolf, everything we needed on its own hard drive. But the growth of the internet makes today's PC much more a creature of the net. And with a personal home server, you gain control over a large percentage of that space. Now, you may not quite be ready yet for a home server, but you're closer than you think.